Hello and welcome to this video about polymerase chain reaction, or as it's more commonly known, PCR. DNA as we know it is the blueprint for all of life. PCR is how we could take a specific piece of DNA and put it through a process to make many, many copies of it. This is very important as it lets us make enough DNA quickly so that we can actually run experiments. The whole process has a lot in common with how a copy machine makes copies of a certain piece of paper. To make PCR happen, we need to first mix all of the ingredients together in a small plastic tube, which is what we're looking at here on the left. So we're going to zoom in on this tube and take a look at each ingredient. The first thing we need is a buffer. So the buffer is just mostly water with some ions in it. It's designed to keep the pH constant so that the rest of the ingredients can do their actual jobs. The next thing we need to add into the mix is the nucleotides so that we can use them to make DNA. The way to think of this is like the paper and ink of a copy machine. It's the raw material. Remember that we have four DNA bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Also be sure to remember that adenine always pairs with thymine and cytosine always pairs with guanine. This is how we're going to use this in a little while to actually make our copies of DNA. The next thing we want to add into our mix is the DNA template. The way to think about this is that this is the original copy that you would put into a copy machine. Remember that DNA has a direction, which we call 5' prime to 3', prime, and that the strands are antiparallel so that the 5' prime end always matches up of the 3' prime end of the other strand, and vice versa. The next piece that we need to add in are the PCR primers. These primers are small pieces of DNA which mark the end of the segment of DNA we want to copy. It tells the reaction where to start and where to stop. So let's say that we want to amplify this entire small piece of DNA that we have here in our reaction. Then we will need one short primer which will attach to each end of the DNA and be oriented in the correct direction. The last thing to add into our reaction is called the polymerase. The polymerase is like the copier itself. It is the machine that will actually use the DNA bases, the template DNA, and the primers to make copies of the DNA strand. Now we're ready to set up our reaction. Here we have our reaction in the tube, and we're now putting it in this machine, which is called a thermocycler. All the thermocycler does is change the temperature of the tube after a set amount of time. It's this temperature change that's going to allow the polymerase to do its work. So here we are back in the tube, and you can see all of our components from before labeled at the top, except for, of course, the template DNA strand, which is at the bottom. I've made the template a bit longer in this case so we can really see each step occurring. Remember, we have multiple copies of all of these components, not just the one copy of each I've stuck up at the top as a legend. You'll also notice that the temperature is in the upper left corner, and right now it's at 18 degrees Celsius, which is right around room temperature. This is where things start when we turn the thermocycler on. Now we're going to enter the first step, which is called melting. We've now raised the temperature to 95 degrees C, which is just under the boiling point for water. This breaks apart the hydrogen bonds which hold the DNA strand together to give us two separate complementary strands of DNA. We now lower the temperature for the annealing phase. In this case, I've picked 55 degrees, but it can vary depending on the DNA you're trying to amplify. This is called the annealing step because the primers can now come in and bind, or anneal, to the complementary single strand at the place where they match, as shown here. They are now ready to be copied. We now enter the final step, elongation. In this step, we raise the temperature to 72 degrees, which allows the polymerase to recognize the primers bound to the single-stranded DNA. The polymerase binds and begins moving down the existing strand of DNA, always adding the complementary base to the three-prime end of the growing DNA strand. So as the polymerase comes off as it reaches the end of the strand, we now have two complete double-stranded DNA molecules from what was just one double-stranded DNA molecule before. So this process can be repeated over and over again. Here we've zoomed out with each line now representing a single strand of DNA. As we go through the multiple cycles, we increase the total number of DNA molecules by a factor of two each round. So with every round, we get more and more DNA copies of our target. This is how PCR generates copies of a piece of DNA for researchers to use in their experiments. And that's the basics of how PCR works. Thanks for listening.